Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my new Doctor Strange 2 video. The actors were talking about what's going on with the movie. We have a big update. There's a bunch of Easter eggs, especially with the villains. So we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want them to do with Doctor Strange 2. How crazy do you want them to get with the concept of the multiverse? So just starting with number five, if you didn't see the news earlier today, Chiwetel Ejiofor did an interview. He's the actor who plays Baron Mordo during the first Doctor Strange movie. He confirmed a couple of really huge details about the plot of Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness, and what's going on with the movie right now, especially given that everything's been delayed because of the virus. He explained what's going on with the villains, and because it's a multiverse movie, I know we're all expecting multiverse-level villains even more epic than the first movie, because technically Dormammu was from the multiverse. Originally, they were supposed to start filming the movie earlier this year, but because of the virus, Marvel delayed every single Marvel Phase 4 movie, starting with Black Widow. Originally, Doctor Strange 2 would have come out next May 2021. Now it's coming out November 2021, when Thor 4 was originally supposed to come out. This is the entire updated schedule for next year, so you get the idea. Everything just moved down a release slot. Previously at the Marvel Phase 4 Comic Con panel last year, Kevin Feige teased the basic premise and plot of Doctor Strange 2 and which big characters would be appearing and how it would connect with the rest of the MCU in Marvel Phase 4. Because the whole theme of the next couple of years of the MCU is the concept of the multiverse. They're trading on it very heavily the same way that they traded on the concept of the Infinity Gauntlet and the Infinity Stones during Marvel Phase 1. So Doctor Strange 2 is just about introducing the MCU to the multiverse in a much, much bigger way. They'd already teased the concept during the first Doctor Strange movie, and even during Ant-Man and the Wasp, they kind of dealt with alternate dimensions, alternate realities, with the way the ghost powers work, the quantum realm, quantum energy. It's just that the other Avengers only learned about the concepts during Avengers Endgame when they had to explain the concept of the Infinity Stones and how they affect the flow of time and the main reality and the existence of alternate realities and branching timelines. So number four, the biggest thing is Baron Mordo said that he's coming back as one of the major villains of Doctor Strange 2. I think we assumed that he would come back based on the way he left in the first movie, but no one at Marvel had confirmed it until now. So now it's official. He is coming back. The last we saw of him at the end of the first Doctor Strange movie, he had become disillusioned with the institution of the Sanctums in the Ancient One after believing that she'd betrayed everything that he stood for. His whole concepts of order, justice, right and wrong as it applies to the use of magic. He says there's a reckoning coming for all of them for their misuse of magic and the bill always comes due. So the difference now heading into Doctor Strange 2 after Avengers Endgame is that he just views himself as the instrument of that reckoning. That's also part of the reason why you probably didn't see him in this giant Avengers roster lineup because he's super powerful. He could have helped them against Thanos, but he still doesn't really like what they're doing in the way people are using magic. His whole beef with the Ancient One was when she revealed that she'd been using dark magic from Dormammu's dimension in order to prolong her life so that she could continue to protect the main MCU version of Earth from threats from outside our dimension like Dormammu, while also continuing to search for her inevitable replacement. She said that she'd actually use the Time Stone to view alternate possible futures until she found ones where Doctor Strange showed up. That's kind of how Doctor Strange got the idea to use the Time Stone during Avengers Infinity War to look into the 14 million futures to find the one scenario where they could beat Thanos. So Mordo cuts ties with the Sanctum and then in that post credit scene removes all the traces of magical power from Benjamin Bratt's character who had previously left the Sanctum after learning to use magic just to regain the use of his legs. He basically strips him of all his magic, saying there are entirely too many sorcerers, which is a reference to the Sorcerer Supreme, who by that time had become Doctor Strange. So Mordo himself is on a quest to balance the scales, so to speak, enacting his reckoning across the world, getting rid of magic users that he thinks aren't following the rules of magic. Number three, which is where we come to the Doctor Strange Scarlet Witch team up in the movie. So Scarlet Witch is going to be one of the main characters during Doctor Strange 2. Kevin Feige said that their WandaVision series will also cross over with the movie like it's a prequel to Doctor Strange 2. And during that, Marvel is going to make Scarlet Witch go full comic book Scarlet Witch, chaos, magic, and all. That's why they're teasing the X-Men classic comic book outfit. And as a lot of people have commented, the reason why this looks like a Halloween costume version of her comic book outfit is probably because in context in this episode, it is a Halloween costume that she's wearing. Remember, they're doing those funny sitcom tropes through the different decades and genres. During one of them, it's probably a party and she's wearing this costume to that party in the episode. So whatever's happening here, it'll just make way more sense when we actually see the episode. 
But this all means that Scarlet Witch is the newest S-tier magic user in the MCU, and Baron Mordo is trying to restrict the use of magic, so that would put her on his radar. They're kind of going the Loki route with Baron Mordo in the MCU. He's not necessarily evil. He doesn't want to kill Doctor Strange or anything like that. He just believes that there are a lot of people out there misusing magic and it's going to lead to another major catastrophe, House of M style, if we're talking about Scarlet Witch references. So number two, the real main villain of the movie as of last year was still going to be the cosmic entity Nightmare from the Nightmare Dimension, but that was when Scott Derrickson was still writing and directing the movie. He left the project earlier this year and Chiwetel Ejiofor also just confirmed that Sam Raimi will in fact direct the movie. We'd heard the news earlier this year, but Marvel hadn't really made a big statement about it. All the trades reported, it seemed like it was confirmed. Now it just seems like it's definitely confirmed if the actor who's a main star of the movie is saying that Sam Raimi is directing it. So if Raimi is on the movie now and they're going with a different screenwriter to write the script, it's possible that they chose to go with a different big bad, but we'll see. It'd be mighty cool of them to tease Mephisto during WandaVision and then have him show up during Doctor Strange 2 in a much bigger way. He's also one of the few big villains that Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange share in common. Big Doctor Strange villain, also separately big Scarlet Witch villain. I even did a big Easter eggs video for the first Avengers movie as part of my Infinity Saga rewatch series the past few months. And during the first Avengers movie, they subtly reference Mephisto on screen. But their plans for the character at that time were very different and they ended up not using him as part of that version of the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. The reason Scott Derrickson said he wanted to use Nightmare as the main villain is just because he was fascinated by the idea that nightmares could be a real thing that could threaten you from another dimension, controlled by this giant cosmic fear lord. The whole concept of Nightmare is that he's only able to affect people when they're in deep sleep states because something about the barrier between dimensions is much weaker at that point for each person. Presumably, in his version of the movie, Scarlet Witch or someone else would have been responsible for weakening the barriers between dimensions enough so that Nightmare could physically enter our dimension and start turning people's nightmares into reality. If we're talking about powers, Mephisto is a little bit different. He usually winds up tricking people into really rotten bargains. So everyone cue up your Doctor Strange memes. Mephisto, I've come to bargain. In number one, because this is a multiverse movie, big crossovers, alternate versions of major characters, Everyone is still freaking out about the Michael Keaton Batman news the last couple of days. He's coming back as a multiverse Batman in the DC movies. For real, no joke, he's coming back as an older version of his Batman from the 1989 Batman movie. So now everyone is expecting Marvel to go the extra mile with its multiverse movie and have alternate versions of major characters. And here's the really cool thing about that. Kevin Feige back at Comic-Con already said that we'd see alternate versions of major characters. He just didn't say which ones. Now because Sam Raimi is directing the movie and he's like Mr. Spider-Man in terms of comic book movies, I know everyone is hoping for some sort of Tobey Maguire Spider-Man Easter egg and reference, but I'd also expect to see other major Avengers characters too. It won't just be one alternate version of a character without them going too overboard on the concept. Like they're probably not going to do an alternate version of Iron Man just because it would kind of undercut his sacrifice during Avengers Endgame. Save all the Iron Man cameos for the next big Avengers multiverse movie like Secret Wars or something like that. She would tell IG4 also said they'd be filming the movie very soon, which based on what's happening around the world with them restarting movie productions means probably sometime in August. There is some small pickups that Marvel is filming for WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier in July, but their biggest movies probably won't get going again till early August. And for the most part, all the stuff that was supposed to come this year, like Falcon and Winter Soldier episodes and WandaVision episodes, are still going to come for the most part this year. But because of all those delays, we probably won't get the first Doctor Strange 2 trailer until they release the Eternals movie next February. They haven't announced all their Comic-Con plans yet, but because DC is doing a special virtual Comic-Con on their own, Marvel might wind up doing the same thing. Whatever they wind up doing, of course I'll do videos for as much of it as possible. Leave all your requests in the comments below. And let me know which alternate versions of characters do you want to see pop up in Doctor Strange 2. How dare you point at me? You, you were pointing first. Everyone post all your Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse memes. While you wait for everything, click here to learn all about Michael Keaton coming back as Batman in new DC movies, and click here for that brand new Marvel Avengers trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.